trust you've had a beautiful week. Amen. The Lord is showing his mercy. And his mercies and loving kindness will forever be yours. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise God forevermore. You have no choice, but by the grace of God, you will enter into your consolidation. You will enter into the fullness of your consolidation in the name of Jesus. This evening, by the grace of God, I'm reloading the part two of a message titled, Entering into Your Consolidation. This message, you know, has been born out of the prophetic word that, has, that the Lord gave us during our just concluded Wonder Working World Conference 2024. Many times the challenge that we have is because when God gives a word, we hear it. But we expect that word to manifest without knowing that there are preparations that need to be done. For the Bible says, break up your fallow ground. When a word is given, what happens? That word has to be sown into our hearts. In other words, if you have a seed, the word of God is likened to a seed. Matthew 4, Luke 4. A seed that is kept in your refrigerator remains a seed and can remain so for life as long as the temperature is right. Can I have an amen? Amen. For that seed to bear fruit, it must be what? What must be done to it? It must be planted in a soil. And from the parable of the sower, where is the soil? Our heart, my heart, your heart. So a word can come from the presence of the Lord. If that word is not sown in the soil of our heart, it will remain a seed. And it can be so for life. A powerful seed. Oh, what a wonderful word. What a prophetic word can remain a seed. Until that word is sowed into the good soil of our heart and nurtured, then it begins to bring forth fruit. Hallelujah. Matthew says some 30, some 60, and some 100. But Luke says, brings forth a hundredfold. A hundredfold will be your portion. I said a hundredfold will be your portion in the name of Jesus. But it's only for the word that is sowed into the good soil of our heart. So when the Bible says, break up your fallow grounds, do not sow among thorns. I saw that scripture on the screen a short while from the book. Hallelujah. It's in Hosea, it's in Jeremiah. Let's read Hosea. Sow for yourselves righteousness, reap steadfast love, Break up your fallow ground, for it is time to seek the Lord, that he may come and do what? And rain righteousness upon you. Hallelujah. Give me the previous one in Isaiah or Jeremiah. When you are sowing, it's important where you sow. To break up the fallow ground means to till the ground. If you go to the soil and you want to plant yam, Even though I never planted yam in my father's house, but I planted it in school as a student. Can I have an amen? You go to the ground and then put yam seedlings. What will happen to it? Yes. But if you want that, I mean, just ordinary ground without breaking it up. Huh? It will be difficult for you to grow. Because it's a tuba. So you need to prepare the ground. And that's why they make heap for it. 
So you break up the fallow ground and prepare a heap so that that yam seedling can be able to grow. Hallelujah. <laughs> says, for thus says the Lord, the met to the men of Judah and Jerusalem, break up your fallow ground and sow not among thorns. So what we are doing is breaking up the fallow ground. And that's why in the first part, hallelujah, is somebody here tonight? And that's why in the first part, we examined what it is. In other words, what God's expectation is to qualify us to enter into our consolidation. I'm not going to repeat myself. You have the message. Hallelujah. Can I have an amen? amen. But I'm illustrating to you what we are doing. Say, well, after all, God's servant has declared the word of God. It may remain a seed and never bring forth any fruits. And that's why it's important, the things that are going on, that we need to examine ourselves, what are those things that God expects of us, which we examine in part one. And in part two, we began to look at last Sunday, 7th of July, how do we spread forth that aroma? Glory to God. Please go with me to 2 Corinthians chapter 2. I'll read those scriptures and we're going to fire on tonight. Endeavor to reload Sunday service. People of God, Nothing takes place accidentally by God. God is a very intentional God. Hallelujah. He's very intentional. There is no shortcut with God. He that believes shall not make haste. If you are going to walk with God, you can't be a man in a hurry. You cannot. There is no shortcut with God. His principles are his principles. He gives you a word. You don't sow it into the good soil of your heart. And by the way, you know there are different types of hearts. There's a wayside heart. It's just by the wayside, along. Say along. There are long hearts. You know what I mean. Abuja, that's your balance, along. What will happen to those ones along? Huh? What will happen to it? The birds of the air. They will come and pick up the seed. <laughs> Glory to God. What is the second type of soil? Huh? Among thorns. And what are those thorns? Oh, Matthew 8, parable, the parable of the sower. Because if you don't understand this foundational stuff, listen, that word will just remain a seed. Hallelujah. Because somebody will say, well, pastor is always repeating himself. I've had that said before. That is just always repeating. It's not for lack of words. But these words will not make a meaning to you. We just come dish you a meal that you have not digested. It, you have not sowed it into the soil of your heart. Of what use? In coming to pile another one. And that's why many believers are constipated. There is so much word and there is nothing happening in their lives. And you are wondering what's happening. Because we are so much in a hurry to see results. We are us, we are not doing the things we ought to do. All you need is just one word. Say one word. That's all you need to turn around your situation and your destiny. Jacob was in Laban's house for 21 years. 
seven years for the wife that he loved, second, second seven years for the woman that tradition and culture gave to him. 14 years. And for six years, he served his father-in-law as an apprentice. 20 years. By the 21st year, he said, let me go and fend for myself. He endured those 20 years. When there was snow, he was able to take care of the animal. He didn't allow any of the animals to get stolen by any beast. If anyone is stolen or dies, he, he never reported it. He worked for it to, repair it, to, to, to replace it. And when it was time for him to fend for himself, what happened? His father-in-law changed his wages. His master changed his wages. You can imagine you earning 100000 before now. Before, well, before May, 20, May 29, 2023. And now they have reduced your wage to 50000 That everything has gone up. Can I have an amen? And what did he do? He went to the Lord in prayer. And God gave him just one word that turned around his destiny. He said an angel of God appeared to him in a dream. And he saw a dream. And God showed him a picture. And he went about executing what God showed him. And the wealth of Laban, some say, was transferred to him. May the word the Lord has given us, may it find a rightful place in the soil of your heart. In the name of Jesus. It's not the quantity. Jesus says, take heed. You must take heed. How you are hearing. You must take heed what you are hearing. Let's go to the parable of the sower, Matthew 13. Thank you. He told them many things in parables saying, a sower went out to sow. We are reading on. And as he sowed, some seeds fell along the path. And the birds came and did what? Devour them. Two passages were given, 2 Corinthians chapter 2, from verse 13, 14, and 15. And Zechariah 8, 20 to 23. By now, those words, you should be sleeping and eating those words. But some of you cannot even quote one, one of the verses there. Wayside hearts. And yet you are expecting, he has given us a word, we are expecting consolidation. And the word has fallen by the wayside. The birds of the air have eaten it up. Other seeds fell on rocky ground where they did not have much soil. And immediately they sprang up since they had no depth of soil. The third one among thorns, when the sun arose, they had no root, they withered away. Has the word taken tap root in your heart? Can you recite what that word is saying? Even in your own words, you don't need to quote it. Do you understand what he's saying? And others fear fell among thorns. And the thorns grew up and choked them. Hallelujah. And other seeds fell on good soil and they produced grain. Some a hundred, some sixty, and some thirty. He who has ears, let him hear. Then the disciples came and said to him, why do you speak to them in parables? He answered them, to you it has been given to know the secrets of the kingdom of heaven, but to them it has not been given. May the secret that has been accosted and given to you to know, may you not, may you not elude you. In the name of Jesus. It's a privilege. It says to you it's been given to know the secrets of the kingdom. But to them it has not been given. What a privilege. Psalm 25 verse 12. Who is he that fears the Lord? Him, the Lord, shall reveal his secrets. The secrets of the Lord are with those that fear the Lord. For the one who has more, more will be given. And he will have an, 
but from the one who has not, even what he has will be what? Every word has life within it. Amen? Every word has life. It's a living word. But that life will only be activated when it gets to the good soil of the heart. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. When you put your seed in your fridge, it stays there. The moment you plant it into the ground, the ground has life within it. And when the power, the life of the seed comes in contact with the life of the earth, what happens? There is an activation. It's your heart that will activate the word of God. Because your heart is the soil. So if it doesn't get to your soil, the soil of your heart, there can be no activation. When there are cares of this world, worry, anxiety, it disrupts the potency of your, of your soil, which is your heart. Hallelujah. And that's why you must be calm. You must keep trusting the Lord. Times are rough. Times are tough. It's not the time for you to be agitated. Agitation only disrupts the dynamics of the soil of your heart. Worry troubles the soil and chokes the nutrients off. Because for your worrying, what is your worrying going to do to your situation? Why don't you cover that worry to praise and just begin to praise the Lord? Hallelujah. And just begin to praise and thank the Lord because there's nothing you can do about it. But you can thank the Lord and appreciate him for his goodness and for his wonderful works. Hallelujah. To the sons of men, and to you, to your family, for keeping you alive. Even though there are challenges, there are bills to be paid, there's salary to be paid, there are deeds to be done. Just keep thanking the Lord. And set the right condition for your heart. Shout hallelujah. 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 Let's put our hands together for Jesus. Amen. Praise God forevermore. I believe that's a good detour. Amen. So in part one, we examine God's expectation to us for us to qualify for the prophetic word. Sunday, 30th June. And last Sunday, we looked at part two. And examine what it means to spread forth the aroma of Christ. Or the, to diffuse the fragrance of his knowledge. And we ask the question, how do we diffuse the fragrance or the aroma of Christ? How do we diffuse it? How do we spread that aroma of Christ? Because as we are told, as we spread forth the aroma of Christ, growth will begin. Peoples and nations we begin to come from all directions and walks of life. Hallelujah. We asked the rhetorical question. Is it true the preaching the word of God? And we said the answer is yes. By preaching the word of God. But how? Because the world is changing. Is it by going to the bus stop and lining up and disturbing those who have been fagged out from money? They are looking at a lift. They are looking at somebody that will give them a lift to get home. They are fitting it home. And you think they will hear the word? Is it by going to knock on your neighbor's doors and disturb their peace in these days of all manners of evil? We said the hour, 2 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 15. For we are the arrow of Christ. The one who is to spread forth the fragrance among those who are being saved and among those who are perishing. Hallelujah. So we said it is through you, through me, through your life that God wants you to become the aroma, the pleasing aroma of Christ. In other words, it's through you 
thank God for the preaching, but it's your life that he wants to do the preaching. Glory to God. We went further to examine 2 Corinthians chapter 3. 2 Corinthians chapter 3 from verses 1 to 3. Can we read the NIV? Thank you. Or the message for a precious time. 2 Corinthians 3 verses 1 to 3, the message. Does it sound like we are patting ourselves on the back? insisting on our credentials, asserting our authority, well, we are not. Neither do we need letters of endorsement either to you or from you. So what do we need? For you yourselves are all the endorsement we need. Your very lives are a letter that anyone can read by just looking at you. Hallelujah. The question is, What message is your life preaching? Leave it in verse 2. What message is your life preaching? Because you are the letter. You are the endorsement. People are looking at Christ. They are looking at Christianity. And it's you they are reading. You yourselves are all the endorsement we need. Your very lives are a letter that anyone can read by just looking at you. When people just look at you, what are they reading? What letter is God writing to them through your life? Because you ought to be the aroma. Says, well, we are the aroma. So how to spread for the fragrance is through your life. Your very lives are the letter that anyone can read. By just looking at you. Hallelujah. I said to you that men may not read the Bible, but they are what? They will read you. And that's why it's important that you must open to the right chapter at every point in time. Shout hallelujah. They will not read you, but they will read your life. And that's why you must open to the right chapter. At, el, at any and all points in life. Hallelujah. God wants your life to be a testimony and an endorsement to his working in your world. That's God's expectation. He wants your very life to be a letter that anyone can read. An invitation to God's abundant life of salvation by grace. Hallelujah. Today, as we continue to deepen this message in our hearts and further shed more light on the answer to the question, how do we diffuse the fragrance and the aroma of Christ? We'll be looking at three scriptures to deepen this truth. That is your very life. You are the letter that anyone is looking to read. Go with me to the book of Timothy, 1 Timothy chapter 4. 1 Timothy chapter 4, from verse 11 to 16. 1 Timothy chapter 4, verses 11 to 16. How do we diffuse the fragrance, the aroma of Christ? Command and teach these things. What are those things? ESV. Command and teach these things. Let no one despise you for your youth. But set the believers an example. In what? In what? In speech, in conduct, in love, in faith, and in purity. And until I come, devote yourselves to the public reading of scripture. And then to exhortation. And to teaching. Do not neglect the gift you have, which was given you by prophecy when the council of elders laid their hands on you. Practice what? Practice what? These things. The prophetic word. Practice holy living. The manner of your speech. Your faith. Your purity. 
Practice these things and immerse yourself in them so that all may see your progress. Shout hallelujah. Your progress is tied to the practice of the word of God. Your progress is tied to the practice of your life continuing to be a letter that is known and read by all men. A letter that was written by Christ, not on tablets of stone, but on human hearts by his spirit. Glory to God. Practice these things. Keep a close watch on what? On yourself and on the teaching. Keep a close watch. By the time we read other translations, you will see what this means. Persist in this, for by so doing, you will save both yourself and your... If you don't pay a close watch on yourself and your teaching, if there is no correlation between your teaching and your life, you will not be able to save yourself or your hearers. Because the wrong message will be passed. Shout hallelujah. They will look at you and look at what you are preaching and say, ah, this thing is not jelly. Shout hallelujah. Let's look at the message. The message from verse 11. Get the word out. Let me tell you, neighbor, get the word out. Hallelujah. Teach all these things. You can see what he wants you to teach. And don't let anyone put you down because you are young. Let me tell you, neighbor, don't let anyone put you down because you are young. Hallelujah. Look at the next phrase. Teach believers with your... Can it be more plain? You want to teach people the word of God? Teach them with your life. Teach them with your life. By word, the words you speak. By your demeanor. Don't be a gagool, always squeezing your face as if, don't give yourself any wrinkles. Put a smile on your face. It says by demeanor. Let your demeanor be welcoming. Hallelujah. Put a permanent smile on your face. By word, by demeanor. By what? By love. Let love ooze out of you. Even when you are angered and annoyed, let love ooze out. It says, teach believers with your life. And he began to expand it by your word. What kind of word is coming from out of your life? By your demeanor, your countenance, by love, by your faith. Are you a man and a woman of faith? Or are you always putting fear into others? Are you a man of possibilities or all you see is the glass is empty? You must become an eternal optimist. A believer that God is in control in any situation. Can I have an amen? Yeah. A man that is not given to panic or heart attack. A man that is not given to anxiety. A man that knows that God rules and reigns in the affairs of men and the affairs of nations. Shout hallelujah. That no matter what it is you may be going through, he still... Says, teach believers by your life. With your life. By word by demeanor, by love, by faith, and by integrity. You must be a man of your word. Not a read. He speaks one today, tomorrow he has changed his mind. Hey, did I say that? Stay at your post, reading scripture, giving counsel, teaching. And that special gift of ministry you are given when the leaders of the church laid hands on you and prayed, keep that dusted off and in. Don't put your gift on the shelf. Be current. Hallelujah. Some of you, because of the vicissitudes of life, because of the cares of this world, you have hung your boots and dust is accumulating on it. It says, keep it dusted off. Shout hallelujah. You must be active. Don't let Jagabanomics, Jagaban economics, don't let it trouble your heart. Let not your heart be troubled. Hallelujah. 
Don't hang your boots. Don't allow dust to accumulate on your Christian boots. Because of the economic situation, because of the hardship, change your diet. If there is no, change it from 111 to 100. And if days that there are none, change it to 000. You will not die. Convert it to fasting. Shout hallelujah. It's not that you start moaning. Hey, how am I going to do this in my life? Ah, ah, hey, hey, there's even no food to eat. Shut up your mouth. Convert it to food. Zero, three days bravery and fasting until God comes through. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. If it's seven days before God comes through, keep on keeping on. You are not going to die. Now that you now organize a pity party for yourself and hang your boots and allow dust to accumulate on it. Shout hallelujah. Shout hallelujah. There is nothing new under the sun. For this time shall pass. I say this time shall pass. I say this time shall pass. Or stay at your post. Verse 14. Okay. Hallelujah. 15 and 16. Cultivate these things. Hallelujah. To cultivate takes time. Immerse yourself in them. The people we see, we all see you mature right before your eyes. Can I have an amen? amen. Many of you, food has so turned you to the fact that you can't even fast again. Allow this period to restore the grace for fasting. Amen. Can I have an amen? amen? Can I have a bigger amen? amen. The people will all see you mature right before your very eyes. Before their eyes. God saw that the earth was without form and void. I did not start complaining. What did he do? He spoke solution. Speak the solution. But while you are waiting, adjust yourself. There is nothing new under the sun. Hallelujah. Next verse. Keep a firm grasp on both what? Your character and your... Don't be diverted. Just keep at it. Let me tell your neighbor, just keep at it. Just keep at it. So that both you and those who hear you will experience what? Salvation. Shout hallelujah. They will experience what? Salvation. Glory to God. Listen and write this down. Your character is the gauge for measuring the potency of God's word in your mouth. Your character is the gauge for measuring the potency of your teaching. Keep a firm grasp on both your character and your teaching. Your character is the gauge for measuring the potency of your teaching. Of God's words in your mouth. Don't be diverted. Just keep at it. Hallelujah. Give me, give me the New Living Translation of verse 16. How do you spread forth the aroma of Christ? Is it by preaching the word? Yes, but how? This is the how. NLT. Keep a close watch on how you live and on your, on your teaching. On how you live. Stay true to what is right for the sake of your own salvation and the salvation of those who hear you. Stay true to what is right. Keep a close watch on how you live and on your teaching. Shout hallelujah. Let's see the Amplified Classic of verse 16. Look well to yourself, to your own, to your own, and to your own teaching. Persevere in these things. Hold to them. For by so doing, you will save both yourself and those who hear you. Your personality must depict your message. Your life must speak. Your character must be the gauge for measuring the potency of your word. 
your life, your personality must depict your message. The power of God's word in your mouth is amplified by your life. Your life must become the barometer for measuring the impact of your message. Look well to yourself, to your own personality and to your teaching. Your personality is what we depict your teaching. It's what we give the potency, your life, your character. That's what spreads forth the aroma of God. That's what spreads forth. That's how you measure the impact of the potency of God's word in your life. What has that word done in your own life? So that if you are going to save others and save yourself, then your personality must line up with the word you preach. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Your life must become the barometer for measuring the impact of God's message, especially his word in your mouth. Can I have an amen? amen. Is, someone, is someone here tonight? Yes, sir. How do we spread forth the aroma of Christ? It's through your life. By word, by your demeanor, by your faith, by love. First Peter chapter two, five. First Peter chapter five. We we'll read verses one to three. First Peter five one to three. I exhort the elders among you, as a fellow elder and a witness of the sufferings of Christ as well as a partaker in the glory that is going to be revealed. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Shepherd the flock of God that is among you, exercising leadership or oversight, not under compulsion, but how? Willingly, as God will have you. How does God want you to exercise leadership? Willingly. Not under compulsion. Not for shameful gain, but eagerly. Not domineering, verse 3. Not domineering over those in your charge, but being examples to the hallelujah. Just stop at 3. Let's go to the message. Verses 2 and 3. Here's my concern. That you care for God's flock with all the diligence of a shepherd. Not because you have to, but because you want to please. Hallelujah. If pleasing God is your aim, then you exercise diligence in your leadership. Do you see a man that is diligent in his business? He will stand before kings and not mere men. Be propelled because you want to please God. Not because you have to. Nobody likes to lead. Nobody likes to take the bullet. Everybody likes to dodge, especially when there is no money to be collected. Can I have an amen? amen. If there is money to be collected as an HOC, or is a member of PPA Fan Senate, I'm sure you will do it willingly. Hallelujah. But there's no money to be collected. It's all service to the Lord. So it's saying that we must be diligent in doing the work, not willingly, uh, willingly, not because you have to, but because you want to please God. Not calculating what you can get out of it, but acting spontaneously. Hallelujah. Not calculating what you want to get. There is nothing to be gotten in it. Not bossily telling others what to do, but tenderly showing them the way. That is what leadership is. A boss gives instruction, do this, but a leader shows the way. Shout hallelujah. Tenderly showing them the way. Glory to God. Not bossily telling others what to do, but tenderly showing them the way. 
Hallelujah. Can I have a big amen? amen? Talking about your character. Talking about your attitude. This is how to spread forth the fragrance. Not bossily, but tenderly showing the way. Are you in leadership in your marketplace? Not bossily because you are the boss, but tenderly showing them the way. Are you the boss in your home? It says don't boss in giving instruction to others, but tenderly showing them the way. Shout hallelujah. Your character must match your message. Titus chapter 2, verses 4 to 10. The last scripture. Titus chapter 2, from verses 4 to 10. How do you spread for the aroma of Christ? Through your life. Through your character. Through your personality. Titus chapter 2, from verse 4. So, train the young women to love their husbands and children. To be self-controlled, pure, working at home, kind, submissive to their own husbands, that the word of God may not be reviled. Six. Likewise, you urge the younger men to be self-controlled. Show yourselves in all respects to be a model of what? To be a model of good works. And your teaching show integrity. Show dignity. A model of good works. And sound what? Speech. You can see what Timothy, what he was writing to Timothy. The same thing. Sound speech that cannot be condemned. So that an opponent may be put to shame. Having nothing evil to say about us. Hallelujah. Can I have an amen? amen? Somebody says, well, he's talking to only leaders. Born servants are to be submissive to their own masters. In how many things? You have that in Ephesians 5, Ephesians 6, and Colossians 3. Born servants are to be submissive to their own masters in everything. They are to be well-pleasing. This is talking about your character. Talking about your manner of life. Talking about your personality. That is how to spread forth the fragrance. The aroma of Christ. That is the key. Hallelujah. They are to be well pleasing, not argumentative. There are some bond servants, they know more than the master. You can never catch them like this. You cut them here, they turn like this. They're always arguing. And verse number 10, not pilfering, but showing all good faith. Don't steal from your boss. Don't pilfer. Don't pilfer from your office. It tarnishes your character and discredits the word of God. You're not spreading forth a good aroma when you do that. But showing all good faith so that in everything they may adorn the doctrine of God our Savior. Let's go to the message. Hallelujah. And take it from verse 5. Message. Be virtuous and pure, keep a good house, and then be good wives. We don't want anyone looking down on God's message because of their... Your behavior will cause men to despise the word of God. Your behavior is the best advertisement for God's message. If you are going to spread forth the aroma of God's knowledge, your behavior, your character, your life is what amplifies the potency of God's message. In your mouth. Shout hallelujah. We don't want anybody to despise the message by their behaviors. How plainer can it get? Also guide the young men to live disciplined lives. But mostly, show them all this by doing it what? Yourself. In other words, your life must model the message. 
incorruptible in your teaching. Your words, what? Solid and sane. Then anyone who is dead set against us, when he finds nothing word or misguided, might eventually come around. Shout hallelujah. They will come around. You know the reason why? You've been trying to preach and preach and preach, but your word is not matching your life. They can't see. Look, this is this man, and what he's saying is different from his life. It's not, that's why they are not coming around. Shout hallelujah. But your life will begin to align with the word of God in your life. In the name of Jesus. Guide slaves into being loyal workers. This is what is lacking today. Hardly can you find loyal and faithful workers anymore. In any field of endeavor. Artisan work, office work, blue collar work, red collar work, white collar job. Hardly can you find loyal workers. And if we have gone through our school of faith, that is the core of our strategy as a church. Our strategy is the marketplace. How you live out there is what is preaching the message, is spreading the aroma of Christ. Guys, slaves into being loyal workers, a bonus to their masters. No, no back talk. May you not become a liability to your employers in the name of Jesus. It says, guys, let's not be a bonus. May you be a bonus in the name of Jesus. No back talk. No petty thievery. Then their good character will do what? Shine through their actions. And what will that good character do? It will add luster to the teaching of our Savior God. Shout hallelujah. Shout a big hallelujah. hallelujah. How do you spread for the aroma of Christ? Your character. It will shine through your actions. It will add luster to the teaching of our Savior God. Ladies and gentlemen, your life, you are the aroma of Christ. Through your word, the words that you speak, through the love that you demonstrate. Hallelujah. And the last question tonight. Where are we to spread forth the aroma? Where are we to spread forth the aroma? 2 Corinthians 2.14 says everywhere. 2 Corinthians 2.14 But thanks be to God who always leads us in triumphal, leads us as captives in Christ's triumphal procession and uses us to spread the aroma or the fragrance of the knowledge of him everywhere. Hallelujah. Everywhere. Everywhere. When Titus says, guide slaves into being loyal workers in your workplace, in your marketplace, in your trading places, that is where to spread for the aroma. That is where to show for good character. That is where your personality needs to depict the word of God. That is where your behavior needs to reflect the aroma of Christ. Shout hallelujah. Everywhere. Ladies and gentlemen, I submit to you that you are the aroma of Christ. I say you are the aroma of Christ. Your life, your character, your behavior is how you spread forth the fragrance. Shout hallelujah. I say shout hallelujah. The greatest and the most potent message you can preach is when your life becomes a letter that is known and read by all men everywhere, always opening to the right chapter and the right verse. May that be your testimony. I said, may that be your testimony. Amen. This is God's plan for us. And if we are going to plug in into this new prophetic word, fresh from heaven, that God is giving us, if we are going to enter into the fullness of our consolidation, we must pay attention as the aroma of Christ. Let's put our hands together for Jesus. 
Hallelujah. Amen. We'll take a few questions before I lead you in prayers. We're going to pray about tonight and also pray about these current situations which I've spoken about earlier. Hallelujah. Do not allow your hearts to be troubled. For I have overcome the world. In this world, you will face what? But be of good cheer. I have overcome. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Let's quickly take one or two or three questions. And then I will lead you in some prayer sessions. Glory to God. Are you blessed tonight? You must prepare your hearts. You must break up the fallow ground of your hearts. So we take your questions. Who is belling the cat? Amen. Let's rise up on our feet. If there are no questions, thank you, Lord Jesus. Okay, somebody here. Give him the mic quickly. Tell us your name. Please, on the mic. Okay, my name is Chimere Zatubu. Okay, my question is concerning Matthew 13 that you read. Yep. So, uh, I'll emphasize more on verse 19. So, I think that particular scripture, I, I got confused at, at times when I come across it. When anyone hears the word of the kingdom exactly. and does not understand it, yeah. then the wicked one comes and snatches away what was sown in his heart. Yes, so my, my question there is, um, what, what happened to an individual who, who understands some certain scriptures? Maybe you, you read Genesis, you get comfortable with it. Exodus, you get comfortable with it. But when you get to some part of the scriptures and you start getting confused, um, like for me, I, there is a particular scripture in the Bible that I don't like reading. Something like um, Revelation, Isaiah chapter 6, and many of them. So, does it mean that God gives limited knowledge to some certain people that when they read the scriptures they understand and when they get to some certain part of it they they get confused so that's actually what I want to hallelujah thank you very much for that question first let's talk about the scripture you talked about when anyone hears the word of the kingdom and does not understand it. So your question is understanding. You get comfortable with Genesis, Exodus, Numbers, right? You are comfortable with it. You are comfortable with Proverbs. <clears throat> Excuse me. You are comfortable with Psalms. You are comfortable all the way to Revelation. So it's only Revelation, then some Isaiah. The one you understand, what have you done with it? Are you following it? Are you working in it? My challenge to you is, the one you understand, start working in it. Be the aroma. Do you understand? The one you don't understand, the Holy Spirit is the author. Do you understand? Is the author. When you begin to read it, Holy Spirit, you are the author of this word. You inspired men. Holy men of old spoke as they were inspired. You are the one who inspired them. Give me the inspiration to understand. Can I have an amen? amen? But I would say this to you. Revelation is called eschatological works. It's talking about the end times. Don't be fixated and link this scripture to that, that it gives limited knowledge. We read the parable in Matthew 13 when the disciples asked him, why is it that you always speak to us in parables? And he said, to you it's given to know the secrets of the kingdom. 
but to them it's not given. Every word of God is given for us to understand. Can I have an amen? amen. And if you take time to press in, the Holy Spirit will show you. But suffice it for me to say this to you, there are certain codes you need to understand, especially the book of Revelation, even any part of the scripture. And that major code is the Holy Spirit. Amen? Amen. Praise the Lord. So I will submit to you the one you are comfortable in. Start walking in them. Shout hallelujah. The one you don't understand, just leave it for now. Can I have an amen? Let's put our hands together for him. Glory to God. Are you clear? Go ahead. Yes. Yep. The way we God gives us um, is for us to choose good. It's to choose His will. His will always. So my question is, if God gives us free will, as as you said, um, and that free will is to choose good, His will always. Does that not look um, compelling? that he gives us free will and he now compares us on what to do with it. Hallelujah. And it, it, it sounds as though it's a compulsive act. You compel me, you give me a free will and you compel me to do what you want me to do with it. You call it free will. Um, it, for me, free will, I understand it to be an ability to choose between good and evil. That's right. I'm an adult. Yep. And when I choose your will always and leave the other one. He makes it not complete. Amen. Thank you so much. Let's put our hands together for him. Look, I'm enjoying him. I don't know about you. Now, first give me Psalm 40. A body you have prepared for me. Look for that scripture and quickly pull it out. Your will do I want to do? Jesus said. Now, while he's looking for that scripture, give me 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and Galatians chapter 2 verse 20. 2 Corinthians 5 from verse 14. Okay. Therefore, when he came into this world, he said, Sacrifice and offering you did not desire, but the body you have prepared for me. Look for it the, in Psalm where he quoted it. God gave you a body so that he can come and dwell in it and begin to walk about on the face of the earth. Can I have an amen? That's the prophecy that was spoken about Jesus, Right? Yeah, because he has no will of his own. If you read John chapter 17, because you appear very vast in scripture, right? He says, I have done everything you want me to do. What I hear you say, an instruction you give me is what I do. Because he has no will of his own. That's Jesus. Everything you have shown me that I have done, I have finished my course. Hallelujah. So if we are following him as our master, then you have no will. If our Lord Jesus does not have a will of his own, the only will he does is the will of the Father, then we are in error when we choose our own will. Can I have an amen? Is somebody here tonight? Are you following? We'll prove it systematically. That's Hebrews 10. Go to 2 Corinthians 5. For the love of Christ compels us because we judged us that if one died for all, then all died. Who is that one? Do you see that one? That O is capital, right? Who is that one? Chimese, Jesus Christ. He died for all. Then how many died? All died, right? 
Next verse. So you and I are dead. The moment you are in Christ, we are dead. Your will is dead. Your desire is dead. Can I have an amen? amen? Next verse. And he died for all that those who live should no longer live for themselves, but for him who died for them and rose again. So if you are not to live for him, where is your own will? Hallelujah. Are you together? Galatians chapter 2. Galatians 2 from verse 19. For I, through the law, I died to the law, that I might what? You are a dead man. Believers are supposed to be dead men. The reason why there is confusion, why we don't even get our acts together, is because our will is completing with the will of God. And that's the sin of the devil. Iniquity. Next verse. I, through the law, die to the law, that I might live to God. Verse 20. I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ lives where? If Christ is living in you, which choice, which will, which choice do you have? And the life which I now live in the flesh, this life that you are bragging, that I want to choose, is it not compelling me? It's, it's not compelling you. This life I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Next verse. This is what is happening to many people. The moment you are not using the will he has given you to choose his will, verse 21 takes place. I do not set aside the grace of God. Give me the translation says, that says I do not frustrate the grace of God. Many of us, we frustrate the grace of God when we are conflicting, when our will is conflicting with his will. We are frustrating the grace. Because you are no longer alive. He came. He died for you so that you can live for him. I do not frustrate the grace of God. For if righteousness comes by the Lord, then Christ is dead in vain. Shout hallelujah. Let's put our hands together for Jesus. Amen. Thank you for that inspiring question. Did I do some little justice to it? Amen. God bless you. Let's clap for him. Thank you. Those of you that were yapping him, I hope you also learned something. Because we're all yapping him. We're not. But we're all laughing. His question was very powerful. Pardon me? They're catching catching his flu. But you are laughing. And you are scaring me. <laughs> Glory to God. Thank you, Chimeze. I love your questions. Trust me. I really enjoyed it. You've added icing to the message of tonight. Isn't it? Isn't that what is done? Yes, Let's celebrate him one more time. <clears throat> Amen. Let's rise up on our feet. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Father, we are grateful to you. Listen, friends, the prayer points I want to raise. Do you believe that God has caught you covered? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Do you believe he has you covered? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Do you believe he loves you? Yes, sir. Do you believe he cares for you? Yes, sir. Did he die for you? Yes, sir. Then why are you agitated? Why is there anxiety in your heart? Why are you anxious because of jagabanomics? Hallelujah. Faith does not deny the fact. Amen? Amen. But believes. He believes God. Faith believes God. You are not denying the fact that the economy is tough. But man shall not live by bread alone. But by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. Hallelujah. We are not denying that things are tough. Things are tough. But this time is a test of your faith. 
Don't hang the boot of your faith and allow dust to accumulate on it, as we saw. Dust it off and keep on walking. If you need to make adjustments for your living, do so. Before now, you just put on all your lights and go to work. And the thing is running meters, 20 cobble per kilowatt hour. Now they say band A is 228 or whatever it is. And band B, I don't know. If you are not in the kitchen, if you are in the kitchen, why should the sitting room light be on? Why should your bedroom light be on? Hello? Life adjustments. You have been eating and eating and eating. You are so obese. And now, Jagabonomics has come. Reduce your food. Can I have an amen? amen? Just make adjustments to your living. And you look trimmer. You look good. You look fit. Shout hallelujah. Because everything works together for good. To those who love God and are called according to his purpose. It's not the time for you to mourn. It's the time for you to set your face like a flint towards Jerusalem. Keep your eye on purpose. Keep your eye on God. Say, well, pastor, you are talking because you don't know what I'm going through. I'm also going through stuff. But your eye must be on the ball. Shout hallelujah. So I want to pray for you and I want you to, I want you to join me in praying. Hebrews chapter 12, verses 1 and 2. Your eye must be on the ball. You can't allow yourself to be shaken. You can't allow yourself to be tossed to and fro by every wind of doctrine. By those promising you, those who have no shirt, like my pastor will say, and they are promising you a wardrobe. They have no shirt on, no shirt of righteousness. And they are promising you with all manners of gimmicks. You flock in there. Keep flocking there. They have no shirt. Somebody that has no shirt is promising you an agbada. But because we love quick fixes, you want it now, now. Waka now, now. Now, now. No. He that believes must not make haste. Hebrews 12 from verse 1. Therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us also lay aside every weight and sin which clings so closely and let us run with what? This season is to teach you endurance. Let us run with endurance the race that is set before us. Verse 2. It's an enduring race. Looking to Jesus the author, the founder, the perfecter of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is seated at the right hand of the throne of God. Shout hallelujah. Keep, leave this before we go to three. For the joy that was set before him. That's where your eyes must be. He was looking at you and I. Have not saved Sam. Have not saved Ronke have not saved Yemi, have not saved this, because he knew you were going to come from your mother and your parents. For the joy that was set before him, because of you, he endured the cross. He despised the shame. They spat at him. Physician, heal yourself. Maybe you say yourself not a believer. So when I say, I know they get money at times. You must despise the shame. He despised the shame and he's seated at the right hand of the throne of God. Hallelujah. I don't want you to be distracted from this race. Your salvation is in nothing else but him. Hallelujah. There is nothing that you are going through that men have not gone through before. There is no situation that is happening around you that is new under the sun. Give me verse 3. Was look to Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, the founder and the perfecter of our faith. Consider him who endured. You see that word in three places? Endure, endure, endure. It's a game of endurance. Consider him who endured from sinners such hostility against himself. 
unbelievers, they will tease you, they will taunt you. They say, ah, so we think, say, with all this life, we will that they carry. This thing is not going to reach you. Jesus endured from sinners' hostility against himself so that you may not grow weary or faint hearted. I perceive that many of you, some of you, are faint hearted and weary. And that's why we have to pray tonight. You must look unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. Lift up your voice and pray for yourself. Say, Lord, help me. Help me. I'm weary. Help me. I receive strength from above. I receive strength from above. I receive strength from above. Help me, Lord. Help me, Lord. Help me, Lord. Help me, Lord. I refuse to grow weary or become faint-hearted. I refuse to grow weary or become faint-hearted. I refuse to grow weary or become faint-hearted. Help me, Lord. I will look unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of my faith. Yes, Lord. Help me, Lord. I receive strength from above. I receive grace from above. I receive strength to endure. To endure the hostility of men. To endure the hostility of sinners. To endure the hostility of sinners. I am prepared to run this race of endurance. It's a race of endurance. I will not grow weary. I will walk. I will not faint. I will run. I will not grow weary. In the name of Jesus. I will refuse to be faint hearted. I will keep my eye on the ball. I will keep looking unto Jesus. The author and the finisher. The founder and the perfecter of my faith. In the name of Jesus. Pray, looking unto Jesus. Zandarabo shekatoria baba. Rakopa shekatoria mazenderia. Reke popo sufiria mako shekata. Help us, Lord. Help me, Lord. Help me, Lord. Help me, Lord. To endure the hostility of sinners. Help me, Lord. To run this race with endure of endurance. I receive grace. I receive strength from above. In the name of Jesus. Re kapo sekataria. Mezendere bosopra kapaze gataya. I refuse to give up. I will dust my, my, my shoe of faith. I will dust it. I will refuse to allow dust to gather on it. In the name of Jesus. Re kapo sekataya ba. Mezendere bosopra. Re kapo soparia. I receive strength. I receive grace. In the name of Jesus. Zandora basepra kapa sekata. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Friends, it's not by power. Neither is it by might. But by my spirit, says the Lord. It's not a walk in the flesh. It is not about any devil this time around. It's about you receiving strength and grace from the Holy Spirit. For it's not by power, neither is it by might, but by my spirit, says the Lord. Holy Spirit, strengthen me. Amen. Lift your voice and say, Holy Spirit, strengthen me. Strengthen me, my inner man. I receive your strength in my inner man. I receive your strength in my inner man. Refresh me, O oh God. Refresh me, O oh Lord, in the name of Jesus. I know it's not by power, neither is it by might, but by your spirit, says the Lord. Help me, Lord. Help me, Lord. I receive strength. I receive a fresh endowment of your spirit. Holy Ghost, on my inside, strengthen me. Strengthen me. Strengthen me. Energize me. Energize me. Energize me. La ropa kose kataya. Mezendere poko supra kapa zende riba sikataya megola raba baba rakopa se pakotoria makuzangata ekele rie popo sompra kele rie mama zendo roba sekata ngele rebo sopra kama zenderia reke poso para baba baba zenda raba sepra rakopa sekataya kala rapa pa sekatora ngele rie mama zanda raba reka papa sekatora ba sekata. Mekalaraba zembro kapa zenderia lerebobo sopra koma zenderia reke boso paraba shikataria. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Paul told Timothy, "Before I come, give attention to reading. If our progress will be evident to all." then we must pay attention to the word of God. 
The word of God must become our life. We are the aroma of Christ. It must become our life. I think it's Proverbs 3.18 or so. It must become our life. When the word of God, you must pay attention. This season is not the time to be doing busybody. This season is not the time for you to be doing gossip. This season is the time for you to spend the time that you have, the free time you have. Use it to develop yourself. More so, you have this prophetic word that has been given unto us to release our consolidation. Pay attention to them. Pay attention to this season. Pay attention to those things that can hinder those unfruitful works of darkness that can hinder us. This is the season. Hallelujah. 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 Father, help me to bring my life in alignment with your word so that I may become the true aroma of Christ in the name of Jesus. Lift up your voice and pray. Say after me, Father, help me to bring my life in alignment with your word in the name of Jesus. Lift your voice and begin to pray. That it will help you to bring your life, your character, your behavior in alignment with the word of God in the name of Jesus. Yes, that your character, your personality will match the, with your word. Your character, your life will match and come into alignment with the word of God. In the name of Jesus.